G'day fellas and people from the interwebs, my name's DJ Ignite, you've all heard this before. Welcome to the tutorial series, it sounds a bit like a drug, FLST, this is episode 4.1, Automation. In this episode we're going to cover as much as possible, so pay close attention, if you don't understand you're going to have to watch it again because I really don't want to answer everybody's individual questions about FL Studio, which is why I'm doing this. So, advanced automation techniques, live recording of adjustments, right click to automate, hand adjustment to fine tuning, altering volumes, pitch and pan, volume and sequencer, volume and mixer, master volume, ah, pitch in sequence, sample properties, I've already done a bit of that, master pitch, plug in pitch if available, sequencer pan and master pan and VST specific automation which we'll cover first. So we're going to do a bit backwards here. Um, keen eye, if you actually watched the previous episodes where I created this crappy shit house song, um, I've actually changed it a bit because I hated those chords, and here's what it sounds like now at the moment, and I need to start the timer. There we go. So what I've got here is I've got a VST plugin called Citrus. That's what it looks like there. It's on the default sound, which is some weird little thing. And we're just going to add in a very simple, very, very simple thing. So I'm just going to go into a new pattern, which will be pattern eight. Pattern nine is our automation. So we're not going to record any sounds in that whatsoever. Record, metronome. Ah, I did a silly. Control Z to undo, I recorded in song mode. I want to record in pattern mode. I think that went for a little too long. But, there it is. Quantize. Ooh. But I did, so we're going to live with our mistakes, which you're going to live with my mistakes. I get the feeling this isn't going to work as well as I sort of hoped it would. <laughs> Fuck off. We'll see how that works. Fuck off for a second. So, we learnt that this starts, comes in late, this doesn't go for long enough, or something like that. Ah. Now, I know just here, I'm going to cut that, I'm going to move it up a little. I'll move it up by one. Cool. Now, uh, this uh, orchestral and most other orchestral plugins have a bad habit of taking its time to get in, which is the envelope. So what we're going to do is we're going to find out where the envelope is that is taking its sweet ass time, and we're going to speed it up. There we go, that looks like it. Let's speed these up. Just a 
touch. And that's it, three. So the three operative operators. And I'm gonna change this envelope here as well. Beautiful. Aha! Now we can see how much I've stuffed up. Ah, oh, what am I doing? I'm pressing keyboard shortcuts before I even know what I want. Now that we've got that, I want to change it around a little bit using the modulation, the X and Y mods right here. So this is what it sounds like when I stuff around in pattern mode. Excellent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into pattern 9, start from over here, record. see that line as well in here, how it's moving up and then it goes straight back down before I finish. At the same time, I'm going to clone this, so I have the exact same, but in pattern 8 it won't be there again, so I'm going to go back in here, control A, select it all, control C, copy it, I'm going to go in here, it'll have, I'll give it its own pattern, which will be pattern 10, paste, now you're probably thinking, why are you having another lot when it sounds exactly the same? Well, it's because I'm going to go into here, go to the drop down, and I'm going to select a Eurogate, but turn off its da -da 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 -da. so it's just eh, okay. and I've always have trouble finding where this stupid fucking thing is every single time. So, while you're watching me fumble about, that's it fucking pattern there it is so instead of it going it's just gonna go beautiful beautiful go back to pattern 9 let's do some well actually go back to pattern 10 we're gonna slap these in as well pattern 9 for our recording go Ah, oh, derp, I'm recording in pattern mode now. There we go. Makes more sense, doesn't it? Into the mixer, and we've I've noticed that uh, both the both citruses, or the citrus and the Eurogate, are a bit too overpowering for the piano, so you can't really hear it that much. What I'm going to do is, as I should have told you before, I'm going to assign them their own mixer track each, so five and six, and I'll rename them two. So they'll just be citrus one and citrus two, and they'll stay grey as well. Now we'll have a quick gander at what that looks like. Oh, that snare's not. Alright, cool. Now I can do one of two things. I can just record and move this myself, and it'll do it. Or let's try something else just for the sake of the tutorial. I'm going to right click on this and say create an automation clip for Citrus 1. There's our automation clip there and we can see there's the volume envelope. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom all the 
I'm going to zoom all the way in here and I'm going to stretch this out so I can have a bit more wiggle room. And I know that's where the little build up for it is. So there's the snare there going. Do, 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 do. I don't know what's called hats and clap there. So what I want that to do is I want that to actually turn down a little. And there's my little enveloping circle. And back over here, I need to turn that down as well so it's nice and even. And I'll zoom out just to make sure it's pretty much straight. There we go. You see that line that came up there? See? So that was for Citrus 1, which is the orchestral. Now I want to do it for the Eurogate, or Citrus 2 as it's called in here. I'm actually going to use my MIDI controller for this. Now in order to do this, I'm moving a slider right now. I'm moving all my sliders. Nothing. I'm going to move all my encoders. Nothing. And you can see at the top left here corner, every time I move something, this little green light comes on. That means that it's FL Studio has acknowledged that it's that a MIDI controller is trying to do something, but FL Studio doesn't know what to do with it, so it's just unhandling it. So it's not doing anything. It's ignoring it. So what we want to do is we want to assign out one of these sliders or encoders to this. So we right click and we go link to controller. And when you see this window, that means FL Studio is now looking for any unhand or any sort of MIDI input. So if I just move a slider, oh, it's automatically mapped its maximum and minimum values for me. If I did that with an encoder, it would do the exact same thing. So let's map the panning to an encoder. Whoops, I just created an automation clip, which I didn't mean to do. <laughs> Oops. So, link to controller. There we go. My left and right. Beautiful. How good is that? I think we're onto something. And at the same time, I'm going to tell this to fuck off. Because I didn't mean to do that. Cool. Now we're getting here. We'll press record. See what we get. So there's our automation clip. I'm just going to move that out the road so it's not overlapping the rest of my patterns. So there you go. That's a whole mess of shit. Uh, but we can change each one. We can change the modulation that I just did. I can change the panning of Citrus 2. There it is there. I can do everything from here. It's just boring in here. <laughs> but if you want something to say the volume to die off at a very specific spot, bang. That's that specific spot that it died. But you use the pencil tool so it does the entire graph. Um Yeah, what else can I show you? Ah, we'll do a we'll do a master pitch bend, because that's always fun. What I'm gonna do here, and I'll show you how to do it in the uh graph as well. What I'm gonna do is I'm loosely gonna move this with my mouse when I get to it. And it's gonna drop all the way down, and it's gonna quickly get back up to zero cents which is bang right there in the middle when it's finished that roll so I'm just gonna go back here to give me a bit of a run up and you'll see what happens done so as you can tell I stuffed that up but that's cool because I can just go straight into here and I will change the master pitch that's where I started, that's where I ended, and see I didn't quite end on time. So I'm going to go into the pencil tool, and I'm just going to go bang. I'm going to go back in here, and I'm going to go bang. And I'll put that back to zero cents. Alternatively, I can select it, delete, which just does the same thing. 
If I go in here, delete. Oh, shit, that's just moved it all backwards a bit. We don't want to do that. <laughs> I actually, I honestly didn't know how that would react to it. But we do want that to be nothing. Because that's before our roll. We know our roll starts here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bit of a envelope. I'm going to go, eh, eh. So it slowly speeds up all the way to the tip. And then stop there. Whop. Oh, fucking. Whew. Thank God for whoever created Control Z. <laughs> so let's just watch it and deselect that, otherwise, it'll repeat it. That's our 15 minute timer, so that means we are done for this episode. Thank you very much for watching, we just covered all of episode 4. So all of that we pretty much did. Don't read it because I pretty much just did it anyways. Without, you know, I didn't do all the tedious work. Because you know that if it has an encoder, or it has a slider, it can be automated. And you know what automation is because I just showed you. So... Same with these, right click, create automation clip, link to controller. You can just move it with your mouse even. Some things you can't automate, you can also automate these mutes. You can. That's not a slider or an encoder, but you can automate those as well. You'll be surprised how much you can actually automate. So um, that's a very, very simple way of showing you just how much depth you can get um, from a song and from just from effects and automation alone, you can make something sound completely different and so much better. So anyways, yep, thanks for watching. This is DJ Ignite, bidding you all farewell for now. <laughs>